Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Oh my god, such an epic episode I have for you. So much to tell you. My life feels like it's been like on a thousand X uh, in the last couple of weeks, basically just since I got to the States, like so much transformation, growth, healing, connection, <sighs> love, so many beautiful things. I think that the most important word I'll share that I've been feeling lately is expansion. A lot of expansion. Like when you really go for it in your life and you step into the unknown and you follow your intuition, which for me was get on that plane and go to the States, <sighs> you really open yourself up to magic. You open yourself up to your divine path. That's all I can really say it is. Um, the main thing I want to share in this podcast is about my connection with my mom. Um, my mom's like super into privacy, so I'm not going to share like a lot of details like I have in the past. Um, but the main thing is that I came to Oregon last weekend and um, I reconnected with her and it was so beautiful, so nourishing. It was like, like I have my mom back basically. <laughs> Uh, and this is something I've like dreamed about. I might start crying. <laughs> I cry a lot lately. A lot of it's happy tears. Um, I basically like, you know, I, w I call on my family every year for like 10 years. And I like leave them voice messages. I let them know how I'm doing. Um, for many years, I even paid for like a Skype phone number that was local for the U.S. so that they could call me back. And I didn't get... I didn't get much back, you know, I didn't get any, I didn't get any phone calls on that Skype number. Um, and so when you have this just nothingness for like 10 years, it's very easy. Like I did my own healing. I did the healing that I could on my journey. And also I, it's like really easy to fill in those gaps of nothingness with doubt that your family even cares about you or loves you or wants the best for you um and the main thing that was really hard for me over these last 10 years was my connection with my mom because growing up like my mom would tell us every single day I love you you're the reason why I'm so happy you know in my life and like basically my mom just like when you think of like the best mom ever you can think of my mom. Like I would come home from school and she'd have like a freshly baked plate of cookies and she was always like telling us how much she loved us and lots of hugs and support and just like anything that she could do to make our lives better, she would. Um, and she would always tell us like, you can do anything you ever want in the world. Like you're so beautiful, you're so brave, you're so powerful, you're so strong. And she cared so much and she was always bringing the community together and helping everyone who needed it. We always had people staying with us that needed a place to stay. And just like, I would say like the essence of what a real community leader is. My mom just embodied naturally growing up. And I learned a lot from her. I, I, am, I am the person I am today because of my mother. And I'm really grateful to her for that, for showing me that much caring and kindness and just like through her own embodied being, like showing me that we as a human race, we have this responsibility to take care of each other and to look out for each other and that we're all in this together, you know? And so I went out in the world and I, you know, I like became that person. Um, and also it's it's a lot to like, to feel like does your mom love you does she actually care like is she is she still the mom that you grew up with did I dream of this <laughs> you know like almost half of my life she's not there you know um which if we're thinking of like our hero's journey our heroess our heroine's journey I really went out in the world and went to over 70 countries, built communities all over the world, and became the person that I wanted to be for myself, but also in, I think, activation of my mother. Like, she activated me to become the person that I am. And then part of the her heroine's journey is to come home and to integrate and to 
and to really embody this, like all of these things I've learned, all of these connections I've made, all of this beautiful experiences I've had all over the world, to come home and put that in the context of like who I am in relation to my blood family. And my sisters and my dad, as I shared in the last podcast, um, chose to not meet up with me and that was okay. I had come into like perfect peace within myself. And I say perfect in the sense of like, I am always trusting of the universe that whatever is meant to be will happen. And I know that I will meet up with them when it's meant to be, right? If it's ever meant to be, but like my love is there. I'm, I am heart open. I am showing unconditional love and I will always be here for them. If they ever need me, I will show up. I will come across the world and I will show up for my family. And also my connection with my mom is like really important. Like I dream of her a lot. And like, even after I moved out of my house and I was married, like, you know, I would be having a bad day and I'd be living in a different state, like thousands of miles away from my mother. And she would call me and she would ask me like, what's wrong? And I'm like, mom, how do you know what is going on in my life? How do you know something's wrong? And actually, yes, something is wrong. And she was just like, of course I know, honey, I'm your mother. This is what moms do. And I was like, okay. So to have that kind of mother's intuition is, and like this connection, this like energetic connection that I've always had to my mom is really important to me. (laughs) So to come back and meet up with her and to receive this love and this connection and this care and this just like my mom is just my mom and she's being her normal mom self around me and making me dinner and you know trying to give me clothes and like just always thinking of me and since we've reconnected we've been messaging each other back and forth and I honor that she is very in touch with her connection to her god and the religion the organization she likes to call it that she was raised in that I was raised in and I will always support that and I will always honor that and also there's this feeling of I think the best way that I can describe it is like landing in my body um, because knowing that I'm not crazy that like the mother that I grew up with is still there and is still my mom and she still loves me very very much um is (laughs) I don't know it's just like it's really beautiful and I feel like you know there's this part of my inner child that's like oh my mom loves me still you know like I didn't do anything wrong just for being myself and that was one thing I said to her I was like I just really want to be accepted and loved by you for being my authentic self and Of course, she has her opinions of me being my authentic self and what that means in relation to her Bible principles that she follows. And still to feel that she still loves me is like so important. And this is what I said to her. I was like, I'm never going to try and convert you out of your your religious beliefs, uh, your Bible principles that you follow. And also, I just ask that you don't try and convert me out of my life, which is my me being my authentic self. And like, can we find this middle ground where we just share love? And we've, you know, it was bumpy for a minute (laughs) over the last week of us connecting. And also, I feel like it's landed in a place where we are able to share this unconditional love. And it's just there. And it's, it's so um, strong. Like I can feel the energy connection between us and we're just sending messages that we love each other. And her and my aunt made me this little photo booth, photo book of me, of like my, of me as a little kid. And I, for various reasons, I don't have any photos of me as a child because my ex-husband, I had all my photos at my ex at the house I had with my ex-husband in my early 20s, and um, he got rid of all of them. Um, I don't even want to go into that story, but basically I don't have any. So when they gave them to me, gave me this photo book, I just burst into tears because I was like, oh my gosh, little Brittany, you know, and like just really reconnecting with my inner child in that moment and reconnecting with this beautiful pure essence that has always been me um is also really empowering for me and it's really it's really helping me to 
feel this like pure energy that I sometimes in the past it would take me like a lot of meditation and my own like spiritual practices to kind of get to this energy because I had built so much protective mechanisms over it because I didn't feel loved by my family I didn't feel safe in the world which was all natural things to feel considering all the things I've gone through and yet to come home literal home and realize oh the love's always been there and this is something that you know we we say in a spiritual sense like of course everyone loves you unconditionally but sometimes it's like that's their higher selves and like what they're able to show in this 3d version of themselves doesn't necessarily line up with that and that's kind of hard to integrate sometimes because we're in this 3d world we're trying to live these lives um and i feel for me at least the spiritual work that i do is integrating my higher self my soul this bigger part of me that's in spirit with this 3d version of me that is encompassing this body that has been through a lot of trauma and pain and you know lots of life experiences that want to say that it's the opposite so this felt like just this kind of like it's a funny thing to say but like grace of god like it feels very like here's a present from you for you from the universe like everything's okay it can be easy you can feel this love from your family and something that my mom even said was like i prayed to god that i would be able to talk to you in person and so for you to be here like in my home is like an answer to my prayers and i was like mom I came from across the world to see you like it was also a prayer that I had that we were able to reconnect and to feel this connection that like we both really wanted this and we both were really aching for this in our hearts and that for me to get on the plane and just like go for it even though I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out I'm just really grateful to my higher self and to my 3d this this incarnation of me that uh even though i was scared even though i felt vulnerable about putting myself out there it all worked out you know so yeah i mean this is like this is like 10 years in the making this reunion you know like this is something that's going to take me a long time for me to understand how much this is going to affect my life me connecting with my mom reconnecting with my mom um also the fact that there has been so many other things happening like I literally have been moving like every couple days like different states here like Oregon Washington California Nevada that my body is having a hard time catching up to what's happening around me and I'll have like moments throughout the day where I just literally can't keep my eyes open because my body's like, okay, we need to go back into spirit. Like we're done. We have like, we have done the max that we can in this moment to, you know, like process all these things. And now we need to shut off for a minute. And I'm just like, <laughs> like nap time. And I've been allowing myself all of that. So it's, I'm grateful that I'm like being gentle with my body. Um, and also I'm like really looking forward to some integration time like back in Thailand after all these experiences to just see how it all lands, you know. And one thing I was saying to my mom was like, I would love for you to come out to Thailand. I would love to show you my beautiful island, have you meet my dog Afro and, you know, I will support you finding the the church like finding you know the place that she wants to go for worship the people that she wants to connect to within the organization the religion that she's in I, I support all of it whatever you want to do I'm here for it and I do this because I love you unconditionally not because I believe in it it doesn't matter what I believe if this is what she believes and this is what makes her happy I'm here for all of it and I just would love to show her my life you know so that's something that I'm putting in the vortex um <laughs> it's really bright out here so my eyes watering um or maybe I'm just crying <laughs> I've been crying a lot recently so it's all good um another thing that happened was I connected with my cousin so this is like my mom's sister's kids and I spent like a whole day with them and it was so beautiful because both of them were also raised within the same religion as me and they left as well and they haven't really spoken to anyone else who was also raised a child's witness. So for them, it's like, and they also live 
in the same area as all of my family. So I feel like it's a lot more, I guess the word is like intense for them because one, they don't have as much like support and two, um, like, I think it's like one thing for me to be across the world and to think, oh, my family, you know, they're not, they're not choosing to be in my life or whatever, but it's like another thing to have them like right there, like an hour away and they don't want to be in your life. You know, that's a lot more painful, I would say. So it was really beautiful for me to talk to them and just like give them support and like share stories and just kind of compare stories of like our experiences with our family, our experiences like living our lives um, and integrating the experience of growing up in this religion and how that's affected us, you know. Um, and it's definitely affected them a lot. I think it's one of those things where it can't not affect you. Um, but I'm really proud of like who they've become and the one of them is a year younger than me and the other one is six years younger than me so I was giving them some like I would say like big sister talks like vibes and support and for me I do that with everyone I love anyways and to have it be my family my cousins that I grew up with I spent every summer with camping out here out in Oregon and just having the best time together um to reconnect with them and like cry together share support and laugh together and just have fun and like vibe you know like this was like yeah we felt like coming home again and just comparing stories and so many beautiful things so it was interesting to go through the roller coaster of my dad and my sisters not wanting to meet up with me my grandparents and my dad's side not wanting to meet up with me and then reconnecting with my mom reconnecting with my cousins I it felt like what I'm saying, like it's like this roller coaster. I'm just like riding the wave. Um and then um I had come I had stayed with my friend Michaela in Washington in between those two things. I've just like seeing both sides of those family. And then I was in Portland this last weekend, like seeing everyone and then like I just wanted to share that like I love my friend Michaela so much. She's one of my best friends in the whole world. And she's just been like unconditional support for through all of this. I've known her for 10 years. Like literally <laughs> the way we met is um, we were both living in New York City in 20, I think 2014. And she and I met in a group therapy. It was like codependent no more or something. <laughs> and like uh, she was the first friend I ever made. Uh, after I left the religion. So I was this girl who really didn't understand how the world worked. I was completely alone in New York City, except for I was living with this like kind of boyfriend who was turning to be very emotionally abusive because he wanted to date me. I didn't want to date him. It was all very toxic. And I met Michaela and it was two weeks before Thanksgiving, which is a big holiday in the States if you're not from the States. And I needed to get out of where I was living. And in New York City, people do not, like, they're not very open or, like, feeling safe to be open around each other. Like, not very welcoming, I guess is the best way to put it, because everyone's kind of in survival mode. It's very expensive to live there. And people just don't really trust each other that much. And so I met Michaela, and two weeks later, she invited me to live with her because I was in a really bad living situation with this guy. And it was like Thanksgiving week, which is like a time where everyone's getting together with their families or like having time off with holidays. And I'm just this girl lost in the world. And she's like, come stay with me. She even gave me her bed and she blew up an air mattress and slept in the living room. And I was like, just kind of in shock that she was so generous and so trusting and so, yeah, just loving towards a woman that she just met. And that was the beginning of a very beautiful 10-year friendship. We have been all over the world together. She's come and lived with me in Thailand. We've gone to Vietnam together, Portugal, Berlin, many other places. And now she inherited her family's um, Christmas tree farm with like 40 acres in Washington State. And uh, her boyfriend runs a community co community co-living estate like very nearby. So anyways, they're super nice. I love them. And they offered to drive three hours one way to Portland to pick me up and bring me back up to Washington. So I just, I'm just like in shock and awe again, or just gratitude, I guess is the best way to put it, that these people that are my real soul family, they're just like, whatever you need, I'm here for it. I'm here for whatever you need. I show up for you. I got you. So they drove down and like picked me up. 
and we drove back up and now we're it's Michaela's birthday today so we are we rented a place in nature here I'm looking at the sea right now it's like on this beautiful island called Camino Island your girl likes islands I somehow am always on an island wherever I go and it's like this apple orchard with like kiwis and fresh berries and a jacuzzi and we are going to do a little ceremony today um, because Michaela's never taken acid so I'm excited her and her, her boyfriend and I are excited to host her on it I don't think I'm going to take any psychedelics I don't feel called to but I'm very excited to host her <laughs> I also was the first one to give her DMT so we've had a lot of firsts together and we've just been through so many we've like witnessed each other's story so much in our lives and like supported each other like we've seen each other through so many different relationships both of us and I'm so grateful that she's in a very healthy partnership now I feel like the guy she's with I, I fully approve of him he loves her so much and yeah I just it's really nice to like see each other and I think like see each other through all of this witness witness each other through all of our stories and like support each other cry laugh all the things together like to me that's real soul family like it doesn't matter where we are in the world we will drop everything and support each other as much as we can and yeah I just wanted to share it like how grateful I am for her um and now I want to share a beautiful love story that I I had in Portland. Um, so I haven't really gone on any dates, like official dates, since I've been in the States. I mean, I had these Bernie Man uh, romances that I shared with you in the last podcast. Um, and when I was in Portland, I was like, I want to have fun. I want to go on a date. I want to just like vibe here in the city. And so I went on dating apps, which I don't normally do. Um, and I met a guy named Jay, and he's this beautiful, tall, big black man from the Caribbean. And we just hit it off right away, even on the on the dating app. And then he was like, the same day, like, do you want to, can I take you out for a date or something? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And so he picked me up at my hotel. And just like from the moment I got in the car, also, I don't normally just get in a car with someone like from a dating app, but I just felt so comfortable with him. It felt like this soul connection already. Like even before we met in real life. And I told him I don't really drink alcohol. So he like researched a bunch of bars that had like really nice mocktails. <laughs> and he took me to a really cute place uh, with like a fireplace inside. And it was very, you know, Portland, very hipster and cute. And we just talked a lot. And I put him in this app that I use called The Pattern. And I compared us, like compared our connection. It has this thing in the app where you can like run a bond and it'll show you like how you'll be connected to each other. And it's based on astrology. And I think it's really fun to like uh, do this on a first date because it brings up a lot of conversations that maybe you, you would take you a lot longer to get to know each other to have. And I felt so called out by this app because normally it's like, Brittany will help this person. Normally the app is like, Brittany is going to help this person through whatever, whatever. Like Brittany's going to inspire them. Brittany's going to, you know, like it's like me helping them. And this connection with Jay was like, Jay is going to be this transformational thing in Brittany's life. And just even if they don't end up together, like by being in his energy, she's going to heal like her connection to men and relationships. And it was like, another one was like, um, past life soulmates past life friends past life like it was like all these past life things and that's really how it felt like when we were together we were immediately like laughing so hard joking this is one thing I really loved about him or I do love he's not dead I love this about him is that um I loved about our connection that night I'll say like the first date that we had was because we immediately were start talking about deep stuff like spiritual things we were laughing and just joking so hardcore uh, and then we went out dancing. I was like, I want to go dancing. So he took me to a, a cute spot that um, has like really good African and like hip hop music. And we were just having the best time. And again, like I said in my last podcast, like when a man can dance, I'm already like, you know, so into it. <laughs> and we were having such a good time dancing and laughing. And then I was like, I'm hungry. And so we found this like really cute like taco spot like late at night it's open till like 2 a.m and for me my goal here in the states is to eat as much mexican food as i can because <laughs> i grew up in california and i love mexican food so much and in thailand it's kind of the one thing that i can't really get like i i also love a lot of other types of food but i feel like mexican food is not very represented in thailand um in my opinion like my version of mexican food which is like very authentic 
I mean, you be the judge of that, but I grew up in California where Mexican food is like our main cuisine. And so for me to be on the West Coast and eat as much as I can just makes me so happy. So anyways, we had a great time. We had a beautiful like um, kiss at the end when he dropped me off. And then the next day is when I hung out with all my cousins all day long. And he really wanted to spend more time together because I was leaving the day after. And so I ended up like going back over to his house and like having a beautiful night. He has this really cute dog that I love and I just fell immediately in love with. And she fell in love with me. And I don't know, like I I was, I was like, I've been going back and forth on like whether or not I want to spend a lot of time with someone before making love or like, or the opposite of that is like, do I want to just feel into it and be in the flow? And of course, like honor my needs for emotional safety, physical safety, all the things. So with Jay, like there was a couple of things that made me feel immediately safe with him. It's like one, he's a dad. Um, he had kids like when he was really young, like in his, like when he was like 20, he had his only daughter and then he, he married a woman who already had two kids. So, and he considers those his kids. So like he, has three kids that are in college or in university, college, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he's like 41 or something. But he like is the best dad. Like the way he talks about his kids, the way he fathers his own, his dog. <laughs> he just like his whole world is around his kids and how much he wants to make sure that their life is okay. And like, not just okay, like they're fucking thriving, you know? And he's just so proud of who they are and who they're becoming. And like, um, so... I think there's an energy of that, like where I know that I want to have kids. So it's not that necessarily that I think like Jay is like going to be my forever person who knows. Right. But I, um, like being in the energy of someone who's like a really good father is like such a turn on for me. <laughs> so that, I guess that just shows that like I'm attracting in the vibration of, you know, what I would like in my life, which is good dads. And then also, um, he was in the military for many years. Um, and just this energy, like, of course, I feel very physically safe in my life. But like, there's this energy of like, when a man just really wants to take care of your physical surroundings and make sure you're like taken care of and you're protected. And like, he wouldn't let me get in the car without opening the door. And he really feels like this is a thing that he needs to do, <laughs> which I'm like, I don't know if I would want that forever, but I just love this energy around of like, I want to take care of your physical space and make sure that you can just completely relax into your feminine. And that's how I felt like every time I've hung out with him is like, <sighs> I can just be, you know, there's like, there's actually like less talking that needs to happen and more just being and just enjoying the moment. And I feel like that's what we do a lot. There's a lot of, um, vibrational, like telepathic energy going on between us, like exchange. I'm like, well, how do I say that? Like an energy exchange that's like happening constantly when we're together and in, in the same room. And because the polarity is, um, for me, it feels very aligned. It feels just so good to be in his energy. So <laughs> this is when I felt called out by this app because I was like, oh my gosh, the thing, this is true. Um, just that like being in his energy is very healing for me. Something that is very uh, weirdly universal thing that I haven't quite figured out yet is why do I keep attracting Virgos into my life? Because this Jay, his birthday is September 8th. My last two partners' birthdays were, is September 9th. And the guy, one of the guys I connect with at Burn, Burning Man, his birthday is September 10th. So it's like Virgos in this very specific window. <laughs> and I kind of feel like I'm uh, dating different flavors of the same soul. I don't know how else to say that. But it's like they all remind me of each other in some way. But in other ways are vastly different. Um, I don't know if I'm just like honing in and eventually I'll find the Virgo or the Virgo will find me. That is like exactly the one that I want to be with. Although my girlfriends tell me that I, I would do the best with a, t a Taurus, a guy who's a Taurus because um, I'm a Scorpio and apparently on the Zodiac, it's like Taurus is the exact opposite. So you can like learn a lot from each other and there's, there's always like this good vibe together. I don't know. Let's see. I'm open to whatever is meant to happen in the universe, whatever is divinely aligned. I'm here for all of it. All I know is I had an amazing time with Jay. We ended up making love. And like halfway through when us making love, I just burst into tears. I think it's just like healing. There was a lot of energetic healing in our connection. And 
you know, just healing also from my last relationship and just like, just like overwhelm in general by like all of the experiences my body is currently having. Uh, and most of them are really positive. It's just like, you know, when you just feel full where you're just like, I'm done. I need to go sleep for like three days, maybe a week and just like not have anything new happen. And I'm just like stacking all the things on top of each other. Anyways, it was really beautiful when I cried because, um, he hosted me really well. He was just like, and again, it's not even like so much what you, what he said. It was just like this presence, this like, I'm here with you. And like, he literally was like, it's okay. I'm here. Like, whatever you need to say, whatever you need to do, I'm here, which just made me cry more (laughs) because that's something that I am very much calling in my life as a man who is able to be emotionally present. Um, and it doesn't mean that they need to feel all the things that I'm feeling. I actually don't want that. I just want them to be there while I'm feeling all the things and to honor my experience and to host me in it, you know, in a way that actually is nourishing and supportive for me so that I can move through it. And I did ask him this because I know this is a Virgo thing about like feeling like sharing your emotions is a sign of weakness. Like this is something a girlfriend of mine who's a Virgo told me. And I asked him, I said, do you feel like safe to share your emotions? And he said, you know, for most of my life, I didn't feel safe because like, (laughs) again, this is a Virgo thing of like needy. He said, I felt like I needed to have everything in place in order for me to feel the space to feel my feelings. Like he felt like he needed to have like everything lined up in the 3D, which is, you know, everyone gets there in whatever way. It just was nice for him to say, or it was nice for him to to validate like, okay, yeah, this is a thing. And also he consciously moved through it and he got the emotional tools and created the safety that he needed within his own body in order to, you know, feel safe to be able to feel his emotions. So therefore, when, when a person has done the work within themselves to feel safe in their own body and be able to hold space for themselves, that is the only time they're going to be able to hold space for you. Like people can only hold space for you for as much as they've held space for themselves. So literally like emotional depth, they can only go as deep as they like with you as they've gone with themselves. And I will tell you that most people have not gone very deep with themselves. They're like scared. They feel shame. They feel like unworthy, blah, blah, blah. blah. And so when they haven't met themselves on that level and accepted themselves and loved themselves there's no way they're going to be able to meet you on that level you know um and I've spent so much time in my relationships in the past like helping trying my best to host my partner so that they can meet themselves on that level not realizing that's the work they need to do with themselves like I was basically trying to do their work for them emotionally and that ended up just one not working because they need to do it for themselves or creating a lot of codependence where I was like literally feeling their feelings for them or helping them emotionally process their feelings for them. Um, or I felt like they were their mom or I just built resentment. Like none of these things were good. It threw all the polarity off in past relationships. So my standard now is that a man is emotionally present, emotionally mature and able to not only do that for themselves, but hold space for me. Cause that's, this is what I am capable of doing and I'm doing all the time for my partners. So something else I wanted to say was like, so it was a beautiful night and I ended up, you know, leaving the next day to come up here to Washington. I'll be back down this next weekend. So I'll hang out with him again. And, um, he also travels a lot. He's waiting for his kids to get out of uh, school in order to, and he wants to relocate. So who knows? Everything's open. I am fully trusting of the universe that whatever is meant to be will happen and not clinging to anything. So that feels very abundant for me. It feels very like just good in my body. It feels yummy in my body to just be like, yeah, I'm in my feminine. I'm here to receive whatever is flowing, whatever it feels good for me. And I just follow my intuition the whole way through. And something else I wanted to say that I realized uh, through going through this experience with this beautiful man He's very, very attractive. (laughs) Uh, He's just like, you know, like when you think of someone and you're just like, damn. (laughs) I wonder if people think, I think people think of that of me, but like, it's, it's beautiful for me to feel that towards other people because, um, I would say that it's pretty unique in my life for me to be like very physically attracted to a man. So yeah, definitely celebrating that. (laughs) Um, something else I realized was that, I'm not sure that I can date anyone or have as a life partner someone who 
lives and works in the matrix. So what does that mean? So like, it's one thing to like live out in the world here, you know, I consider like, not a conscious community, like matrix for me means like someone who like lives in a normal environment, normal society, but works in the matrix means like they work for someone else. They work like a nine to five. They are employed by someone else. And there is nothing wrong with any of those things. So I'm not casting judgment on anyone who lives or works in the matrix. Again, nothing wrong with that. If I think if anything, people who live too long on Copan Yang become very ungrounded in this reality because we're still living in the 3D reality, even though we're shifting right now. Um, so I feel like especially for men who live in that like Copan Yang, because it is its own matrix, sometimes they can get very ungrounded or a little too in their feminine. Because living on Copan Yang is very flowy. And I think that especially for men, like they're meant to be doing things in the 3D, you know, like accomplishing things, overcoming challenges, overcoming obstacles, growing, you know, like this is what helps men to be in their masculine. Um, and also as humans, whether you're a man or a woman, like we're here to create things in the world, to create beautiful things. So uh, it's not, I don't think the point of life is to be idle, you know, to not do anything. I think the point is to do things that you love with people you care about. Like that is my goal in life is to make beautiful things in the world, create impact and do it with my soul family. Like so that the whole way through I'm having the best time and I'm feeling the best in my body. So I've, the reason why I think I also attracted NJ was because um, I've been asking myself like maybe it's better, maybe I will find or maybe a man will find me that is more in their masculine, the more balanced, more grounded if they're living in the matrix, you know, like I can be my flowy, spiritual, witchy self and they can like be the more grounded one. <laughs> but what I realized is that I need to, I choose to have a man who's my life partner who is unemployable. Someone who works for themselves and not just like someone who works for themselves, but someone who is like actively changing the world for the better like who's feel definitely feels like they're on their soul mission because that's what that's how I am like I need to be met in that I need to feel like an equal in that and like the the best way that I can like describe it is like someone who's like Elon Musk you know and I'm not saying I don't have any opinion of Elon Musk I don't I want to like take that out of this equation what I'm just saying is that like Elon Musk gives no fucks and he's playing the game of life to the max in his own way again I have no judgment on what he's doing so take that out but what I'm trying to say is like he's not employable he's like doing whatever he wants, having the best time, making all the money. And in his own way, he feels like he's accomplishing his soul mission. And also the, the, key, the key factor I think in here is that I choose to be with a man where what they're doing in the world is inspiring to me. It's like their soul mission doesn't necessarily need to match my soul mission, but it needs to feel like we're building the new earth vibration in our own ways. Like we're, we're literally doing our best to change the world for the better. And we can each do that again in our own capacities in whatever way feels like the most fun for us. But someone who's just like working to like make money, I, I, I just do not find that inspiring, activating, sexy in any way. So that's my own personal preference. Again, not casting any judgment on anyone else, but like it's interesting for me to go through this experience to like understand what I would like and what I don't like because Jay is an entrepreneur he has an e-commerce company that's very successful but he also has a nine-to-five job and I just realized like like my life is literally so like in my own sovereignty in my own personal power just flowing in whatever way is my sole mission and I have the freedom to do that I've created the freedom to do that I'm not privileged I mean, priv what, privilege is like someone else giving you this. You can say I'm privileged from the universe because I'm just in the knowingness and I'm trusting the universe and I'm always guided and protected. And this is what therefore happens, right? So I choose to be with someone else who also is in that knowingness and also is creating that freedom and that personal sovereignty for for themselves. So anyways, oh, one more story I want to share about Jay is that <laughs> I just find this so cute. Um so we had this beautiful date like Saturday night, right? And then Sunday, I was meant to hang out with my cousins for like half the day, but one of my cousins, her car broke down. And so we spent like a long time like helping her fix it and just figuring out what was going on and blah, blah, blah. So I ended up taking like the whole day, which was fine. Like my main priority is to hang out with my family right now. So, but he was, Jay was worried that I wasn't gonna, like I was gonna be tired naturally. And I was tired. I was gonna be too tired to hang out. So what I did was I took like a power nap and then I messaged him and I was like, yeah, I'm still down to hang out. Let's do this. 
And he told me later, like at the end of the night, he's like, yeah. So, so anyways, oh, first I'll say I went over to his house and he acted like so chill you know and i have this thing that i was just sharing in my last podcast about like men being very excited to meet me initially and then for whatever reason um not acting as excited the second time or just like being in a very different energy and so this was a little triggering for me at the beginning of the night when i went over to his house because i was like oh my gosh here we go again you know like is this another guy who's like not going to be able to meet me emotionally because he felt a little distant emotionally and so I was like, let's just feel it out. Let's see what happens. And so at the end of the night, so it ended up being a beautiful day or a beautiful night t- together. We made love, all the things, connected, had the greatest time, hung out with his little puppy. Um, and at the end of the night, he tells me, yeah, when you told me like that you were for sure coming over, I was so excited that I was like dancing around in my kitchen, like doing jumping jacks and just like celebrating and then he was like and then I told myself okay you gotta get it you gotta get it together you gotta calm down and he was like and then I made myself do all these push-ups and I was just like oh okay I'm calm and I was like well you were so calm that I didn't even know if you were excited to see me that's how calm you were and like next time I would rather you just be open about how excited you are because that makes me feel really good and he's like really and I'm like yeah like what is up with this thing with men that think that they need to not show their emotions I know this is programming but I'm like come on like I'm I would rather a man be like I'm so excited to see you like and share this with me instead of do push-ups and then act like like he's just like you know not there emotionally when I come over like he's so trying to keep it together and this is just confirmation again that I know is that men a lot of times get very very excited to uh, to hang out with me that they like almost it's like overwhelming for them I've had multiple men tell me this that they just get so overwhelmed or like they're so worried they're not going to do the right thing or that I'll reject them in some way and I'm like can we just vibe can we just have a good time <laughs> like I'm here for the good times I'm here for the emotional maturity and openness and you know sharing from our hearts vulnerably <sighs> but I thought it was really funny and cute that he did that um Uh, I wanted to share with my friend Rosanna, who's one of my best friends. She, her and I were uh, talking about this connection I had in Portland with Jay. And she was like, are you getting better at manifesting men? (laughs) Cause she's always like learning from me of like my stories of me manifesting these beautiful connections. And I, I would say that, yes, I would say that I feel very aligned within myself of like who I am and what I choose in order to connect to like who I would like to connect to and so I feel very grateful that like these beautiful men are coming into my life and I feel like every single one of them I'm like consciously like asking myself like do I want to be with this person do I want to spend time with this or like what what am I learning here in my own preferences of like do I want to spend time with this person or not you know I'm like who do I want to be with long term And I feel, I feel that like, especially in the energy of the men that I'm attracting in now, I feel very emotionally safe and I feel like they're like very emotionally open and mature. And the second that they show me that they're not able to hold that, you know, because maybe they're able to hold it for a little bit and then they get scared or they feel too vulnerable. But whenever a red flag comes up, I'm really proud of myself that I'm like honoring myself because I really deserve to be with someone who can hold this as a standard in their life of like being emotionally safe and open and like I said in my last podcast it's not about them like being perfect like I have days where I have no clue what's going on and I'm just crying I'm having a bad day you know but it's like are we able to be um present emotionally with each other through that are we able to say I don't know what's going on I feel vulnerable and I I need some support you know like if a man said that to me, I would, I, and, I, and they have in the past, and I show up as best I can, you know, like, I think as a society, we have this programming that, like, men need to, um, I mean, this is traditional, but I would say that it runs a lot deeper, even in, it even comes through in conscious communities that, like, like, men are only really allowed to show, like, anger, and and even in conscious communities so in the mainstream world like men are really only allowed to share like show like happiness or anger um but in conscious communities i feel like even anger is taken away from men because it's like oh you you don't want to be like a bad man or you don't want to be a toxic masculinity so don't show anger in reality like 
men have the full scope of emotions just like us women and they should be allowed to feel all those things in a safe container and of course to create safety for us women like um but like i feel that there could be a lot more spaces we we as women could create and also men could create this for other men but us women like because we have a lot more emotional tools that we were allowed to learn growing up and we have a lot more space that we've been given most of us to feel our feelings i think this is a really beautiful offering that we can have to men to be nurturing and to be safe for them and to show through our own vulnerability that it's safe to be vulnerable you know, and to not think less of a man when he cries in front of you. I tell all the men in my life, I think it's the biggest sign of masculinity if a man can cry in front of me and to share their emotions and to feel vulnerable and to know that it's okay. Because we all have these feelings and it's so normal. And the more that we're allowing ourselves to feel these with each other, the more we create safe spaces for each other and the more connection we feel with each other and the more we feel at home, like in our bodies and with each other, because feeling at home in your body is allowing yourself to feel the full scope of emotion of this human experience. This is what's the beautiful thing of this human experience is allowing ourselves to feel this full scope. Whew, I could talk forever about that. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about was, um, I just want to sh give a little shout out to my, or a big shout out to my friend, Josh. He was the guy that I connected with. I made a podcast with him um, that I connected with romantically after my last partnership. And then we transitioned it to friends because we're both like in, a lot of my friends are like, why are you not with Josh? Like you talk about Josh all the time. And I was like, I love Josh. And also um, he's in his mode of like becoming a world famous musician. And I fully support that. And also I'm in a mode where I'm not building my life from, you know, like from the foundation up. I really have built a life that is beautiful for myself. And I choose to be with someone who's already built their life. And Josh has opened, very open that he's in the middle of building his life. And that's beautiful. I want to support him as a friend while he does that. Because that's the best way that I can support him. Because he's in the middle of the unknown. Like he's traveling all over the place. He doesn't have a, a set base. He's, he's not sure where he's going to end up. And I would rather us uh, support each other through that journey as friends. Um, and also, of course, we still have like so much love for each other. But the one thing I want to say about Josh is that I just so appreciate our connection because we will send these like mini podcasts to each other of like, sometimes it'll be like three or four 10 minute voice messages uh, like I'll send like three or four 10 minute voice messages and then he sends me an 18 minute voice message and we both are just like loving it so much like sending these voice, voice messages back and forth um and he was even joking the other day he's like I'm sure by this like halfway through like an 18 minute voice message he's like I'm sure you've already 2x me by now like sped it up you know and he's one of the few people in my life that I don't speed it up I love listening to his voice messages on like normal speed and it's not that I won't speed up like it's not that I I'm not saying that me speeding up a voice message is a bad thing. It's just that a lot of my friends, like, you know, we're sending each other, like, you know, normal life messages to each other of like, you know, what are we doing today? Or like, when are you coming over? And of course, I'm going to 2x those because I, I already kind of know what they're going to say. But with Josh, it's like, I just love hanging out in his vibration. It's like so it's such a safe masculine container and he's just always supporting me and like who I am and has these amazing reflections and like it's always like you are so amazing you're doing the best and like and like reflecting to me emotionally what I'm going through in a way that actually creates clarity for me like we had a call the other night like the day that my grandparents told me that they didn't want to see me I was in the hotel room and I was like, I was, I was so upset that I couldn't feel my feelings. Like I had hit this overwhelm point and Josh was in Thailand. And so it's morning time for him and like nighttime for me. And he was like, let's jump on a call. I'm here for you. And we talked for like an hour and a half and it took him about halfway through that call to like 45 minutes of him like hosting me my emotions and also us laughing and talking about normal things. But it took him like half of the call for him to get me to the point where I could have a good cry and I felt like I could release a lot of stuff and he really reflected to me like how much my family actually really really loves me and that's what I needed to hear in that moment um and he was telling me he's like not only do I not 2x you 
but I actually wish I could slow down <laughs> your voice messages back. He's like, could j-? he's like, I wish I could point seven five it. He's like, I don't know if that would make like, I don't, he's like, I don't know if that would be enjoyable to hear your voice in that way because it might sound creepy. <laughs> but he's like, I just want it to last longer. I want to like be in your vibration longer. And um, the other day was so you know him and I we still have this like very flirty thing and we still like we still have a lot of romantic feelings for each other and I think that to me this is like such a beautiful example of a mature relationship between a man and a woman because we still find each other super attractive we still like you know I would still love to make love with him next time I see him next time I see you Josh I want to make love with you if you're watching this let's do it And also, of course, if it's all aligned and, you know, it's like meant to be in the universe. And also, like, it's okay that we are on our path right now and we're supporting each other. And so even through all of that, like, I've I've been in like similar situations with other men where, you know, I had a romantic thing and then we became friends. But I never had a point where, like, I felt comfortable to share new love interests with that, like, with the guys that I had been in the same similar situation with in the past and so with Josh the other day I asked him I was like are you comfortable with me sharing about you know like because like Jay was the first guy I slept with since I was with Josh since I slept with Josh and so I was just like you know like are you cool with me sharing about this because I would love to hear your reflections um of the situation of this guy and like just hear what you think about him and also just share like this is something that's going on in my life And he was like, thank you for asking. And yeah, I feel really honored that you, he's like, I feel like this shows how much you trust me, that you're like willing to share this stuff with me. And also, of course, I want to honor that I still feel like some jealousy come up because I am still really attracted to you and I love you. And also like, he's like, it's all the things. Like, I'm just happy that we, this is like one more layer of connection that we have. And there's something in that that is so healing for me that like a man can hold that, like, all of those polarities at once and still show up for me and still feel like excited to host me and talk about it. And then he ended up sharing that like he's going to Berlin. It's it's funny how we have danced around this because um, I had told him about some of the guys that I connected with at Burning Man, but I didn't really tell him that it was romantic. I was just like, yeah, we're friends. And then now I like told him and I shared about Jay he calls him matrix man, <laughs> which I find hilarious. And then he had shared with me like, yeah, I'm going to go visit a friend in Berlin at the end of the month. And then now he's shared like, actually, this might be someone that I could have a rom- romantic connection with. And I'm like, I'm so happy for you. Like, let me know how it goes. And I'm happy to host you and like, whatever comes up. And yeah, just all of it just feels very healing. Like I am team Josh right now. Like I'm like, if you guys are rooting for someone for me to be with, let's put energy into it working out with Josh. <laughs> That's just how I feel in this moment. Um, but I just wanted to celebrate like how much like he, he's just a really good man. <laughs> just want to celebrate that. Like he was telling me, Oh, he says so many things that make me want to cry and his his voice makes me cry when he sings like he really is going to be a famous musician very soon I can feel it like he's only stunned music he's only he's only done music for six months like before this he had a whole other life and then he just decided to quit everything pack his bags move to Thailand and start music uh Anyways, but he was saying to me, he's like, you know what, Brittany, even if you end up with someone else, even if you have beautiful babies with someone else, like he also wants to have, we've talked about it. He wants to have like four kids with me because he was like asking me, how many kids would you want? I was like, well, I'm one of three, so I can see myself having three kids. And he's like, well, I'm one of four. Can we negotiate? Do you want four? I was like, are we talking about having kids? This is like after we became friends. And it's just funny how we drop into these things of like do we want to have four kids together? But anyways, he was like, if you, so recently he's telling me this in a voice message, like if you, if you end up with someone else and you have beautiful babies with them, I still am so excited to show up in your life and whatever way is healthy for you and whatever feels safe. And I want to be there in your kid's life. And I want to be friends with your partner. And I'm just like, you don't realize this is making me fall for you even more. <laughs> but again, this is what I mean by like, 
these really beautiful, healthy masculines that I'm attracting to my life now. And like, for me, this is my standard. Like none of this, like men who feel overwhelmed by my energy and just don't message me back or, you know, is like on again one day and off again another day. Or, you know, my ex who has told me like, I'm scared of you and like (laughs) your emotions overwhelm me, you know, like I'm here for the men that are like, that are like, I give me more, you know, like, tell me more. I'm here for all of it. I want to, I want to be a safe space for you. I want to be this. It's like an honor for me to create safety for you so that you can heal everything that you have with the masculine. And so that you can, I really believe that every connection between men and women, like, or whatever you are, like if you're polarity wise, like, you know, if you're leading in the masculine and someone's leading the feminine, whatever that is. So whether you're the same sex or, or opposite sex, but like, I feel like in general, the masculine and feminine energy in the world is trying really, really hard right now to heal and become this beautiful polarity. I think of like the, um, the DNA spiral, or you can think of like the Kundalini, if you know, that like the kundalini snakes that go (laughs) it's it's sometimes i think of things in pictures of energy and it's hard to put them into words but basically the kundalini spiral is two snakes that go up your spine uh through all of your chakras and come out the top of your of your head um and that is the math representing the masculine and feminine energy that's in all of us and right now as a collective we are doing our best to heal this and so that the energy can flow fluidly through each of our bodies and flow fluidly through between all of us so any time that there is a dynamic between you and someone else that is the opposite polarity of you so for me i lead in the feminine so for me the polarity would be someone who's leading the masculine any time that there is a healing that happens between us like me and someone who's leading the masculine whether it's romantic platonic whatever I really believe that this is healing the whole collective because we are all part of one big energy mass, you know? Um, and uh, I'm just really grateful for all of the healing that I've had recently with this, with the masculine energy uh, within myself and therefore reflected externally. I was in the grocery store. I just want to share this random thing. I was in the grocery store yesterday and I just felt so happy in my body like this is like my connection to the masculine I was just like had I had this like download where I was like wow all of the men in my life just really love me and are here to support me and support the person that I'm becoming and just love making my life better and I love doing the same for them and it was just really funny because like I've been feeling so grateful to be here in the states and like this is a very random thing, but like the shopping cart is literally my height. Like, um, cause in Asia, everything's very small. <laughs> uh, and I'm, and like, I'm walking around the grocery store, like, do, 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 like we're getting all these snacks before we came out to this farmhouse. And, and like, I can understand everything because it's in my language. And like, also culturally, everything is like my culture that I grew up in and I was like smiling at all these really beautiful men in the grocery store and they were all smiling back. And I was just like, I feel so divinely supported and guided and loved and nourished and I feel so at home in my body and I just feel so grateful to be alive. Like that's the thing I want to leave you with in this podcast is like when you are really following your soul's mission, like you you will feel this energy. It's like this warm golden energy going through your body of just feeling so grateful to be alive. It's like this feeling of like, like the best way I can describe it is if you ever take an MDMA, it's like that, but you're sober. <laughs> you just feel so good in your body, so in so in your body, and just so grateful to be alive that you like want to cry and laugh all at once. And instead, I just smiled and like sh- like gave this energy out to everyone around me. <sighs> so there's so much more, but it is now time to host uh, my girlfriend Michaela on acid. <laughs> And I'm very grateful that I get to be here for her. She said that she manifested this before I even came to the States. Um, So yeah, we're going to take some and like go down to the sea and probably run around this apple orchard. (laughs) And yeah, I'm just really grateful for life. I will update you more as more things happen. Um, I'm planning to go to Portland this weekend and hang out with some cousins on my dad's side. 
they're going to drive up three hours to get me and drive back down three hours. Like I love the people in my life so much. I'm so grateful. And I'll spend some more time with Jay and then I will fly to LA. I'm going to be in LA for a week. And I just love it that like back on the island, I, my friends who were stayed in the house, cause I've been gone officially a month and that's how long I thought I was going to be gone for. And so my friends who were staying in the house, they had to leave. They're like going to Bangkok. And I was like, you know, Afro and my cat are in my house and I'm like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> you know? Cause I kind of just decided last minute to stay longer. And I had all of my soul family show up, like five different people on the island that are like, we'll take Afro for this night. So we'll pick her up, take her for walks. Like everyone was like, one of my friends is like, I'll move in. Like everyone was super down for whatever needed to happen. To me, that is like full on soul family that I don't care what's going on. I'm going to show up for you. I'm going to take care of you. Don't even worry about it. Just go to sleep. Because it was like, I was like, you know, trying to figure this out last night when I was going to bed. And then, of course, someone comes through in my community who's like, I can rent the house for the whole time period and take care of the animals. And, you know, I love animals. I'm so excited to be there and give them love. And and I'm just like, so now all of my soul family, I'm just so grateful. That's what I want to say. All my soul family is like, okay, so someone's living in the house with Afro and Shadu and we'll just pick up Afro. Like, so every single day she has like a soul family who's going to pick her up for the beach walk. And that just makes me so happy. And the other ones, I want to take her to the waterfall and... And it just, life is amazing. Like when you really trust and you really follow your intuition. And that's the thing is like, logically, it makes more sense for me to go back to the States from Portland or go back to Thailand, not the States, go, go back to home to Thailand after I see my cousins this weekend. But there is something in the universe that is my soul calling to me and telling me I need to go to LA. I don't know what's going to happen when I go to LA. I have friends who are excited for me to come visit them. So I'll see my friends. But I feel like there's something in my soul mission of me going to LA. And stay tuned, stay posted. I will share with you whatever comes up. I have no clue. And it's very exciting because we're all in this together. Watching the unfolding of Brittany Bond's life. (laughs) Um, But just like I knew when I got on the plane here to come to the States, like, I knew I was going to go to Burning Man. I knew I was going to do my best to heal my family, but I had no clue what was going to happen after that. And really so much abundance, love, connection, growth, expansion. And just reconnecting with my mom is a major one for me. So yeah, I'm really grateful. And I'm sending you all of this love and this nourishing energy. And it is cold here in Washington. So my nose is running. It's just funny to be in and out of all these climates, climates, because like in Nevada and California, it was really hot. And then in Portland and here, it's like sunny one day and rainy the next day. And I'm here for all of it. (laughs) But it's funny to like be cold because in Thailand, it's just hot all the time. Um, And I'm grateful for that, too. I like the seasons, especially because inside we have a a fireplace and it's very warm and cozy in our little farmhouse. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm sending you love. Have a beautiful day. Bye.